Hello, my name is Juan Sarmiento and I serve as Associate Director for Mission with the Outreach Foundation. Today we have the privilege of having with us Pastor Roy Soto from Costa Rica from Fajanes, who is someone that we have had the privilege of partnering in the uh, equipping of leaders uh, throughout Latin America, including uh, a few Presbyterian churches in Latin America. Thank you for the opportunity that you provide for me to be in here. It uh, has been a very uh, very nice adventure that we are working together trying to find a ways to continue helping the local church to understand why they exist as a church in their own context. So thank you. It's a privilege for me to be in here too. Let me ask you, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did uh, you come to this calling of equipping servants uh, for God's kingdom? You know, there is a, a long story, but my father he was a pastor for 45 years. so. For a very, very, very traditional and legalistic organization in Costa Rica, so my father he he get his calling to be a pastor in a dairy farm. So one morning he wake up in the morning and he says, "God is calling me to be a pastor." So he went to his uh, pastor's office and explained him about his calling. So his pastor sent him to the field. Okay, if you're a pastor, go ahead. So being part of this kind of environment give me the idea and the feeling that there is a tons of pastors they have that calling from God to do ministry but they don't have the tools and they don't have the possibility to be training and theological perspective formation so through my experience being in that kind of environment and now being a part of Shalom Church as a pastor um, and you know making connection all over many many different countries I saw the same situation that my father has good people great heart good calling but without formal education in theological basis so that's why I feel like God is calling Shalom to facilitate our experience our learning on the field and, and beside this my own uh, theological formation and help pastors to understand it and facilitating tools. Tell us more a little, a little bit more about what those um, learnings have been, how, what do you think Shalom uh, could offer to other churches and pastors in Latin America? Um, you know, uh, I think the main reason why this, the church exists in all over the globe is to bring the kingdom of God values inside to whoever context is. Shalom had experience being in a rural area for 22 years. We started the church with four people and little by little by the grace of God we start growing in numbers and growing in influence in that context that we are located. So if the main reason why the church says is to serve but there is a ton of pastors that they think that the only reason why the church exists most is to be inside of the box, inside something I call the salt shaker, inside a box. So they need to be exposed to different ways to do ministry. I don't like to use the, the, the word model, the Shalom is a model, but I, I want to facilitate they are learning as a church in the way they can understand they can be relevant relevant in their own context they can find a way I believe the gospel has the power to transform every any reality doesn't matter in what context that church is located so we exist as a church to use our learning as a, as a, as a proposal for those pastors that they can understand or what they can do in their own context. Does that make sense? Sure. And talking about context, uh, you've had um, uh, the opportunity to work, train pastors throughout Latin America in different countries. Will you name some of those countries and what, what has uh, caught your attention in terms of the differences between the church in Costa Rica uh, and uh, the challenges and the context in Costa Rica and the realities in different countries of Latin America? Every country has their own context. For example, Central America, Costa Rica is part of Central America, but Costa Rica 
for some reason we we have no army so our experience as a nation we don't have the the mentality of military mentality as other countries in Central America so every time when I go there we have to be very careful when we use the word socialism or to touch some of the political topics and all these countries has but again you know the gospel has the power to transform any reality so what my role is to facilitate concept and theology in the way the pastor can understand they have to contextualize the theology to their own ground their own uh, reality and there are some other countries in South America like Bolivia, Argentina, Chile and but most of the pastors they have have the same uh, the same need formation and and you know Juan they need somebody among them to be with them because most of the pastors with all my respect most of the pastors they work for huge denominations but that denomination has their, their own environment but they don't have a, a closer relationship with a local pastor so in my role I love to be in touch with those pastors I am not thinking that I'm their messiah no I, this is not about messiah nothing but it's more about relationships so again they need formation but they need somebody to to be with them facilitating resources facilitating um, concept of theology from our experience Wonderful. We have the opportunity, you invited us to be part of one of the summits mm -hmm. for servant leaders mm -hmm. and uh, it was a phenomenal opportunity. Um, uh, so people are finding that they can also go to Freihanes mm -hmm. to learn some of the aspects of holistic mission mm -hmm. and uh, creative kingdom based transformation for communities. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about those summits, uh, particularly the last one, uh, wh what's your sense about those? Summits? You know, for nine years we were organizing this kind of some summits. Let me explain this. Why we call that summit Summit of Servants? We don't use the word leadership. For me, leadership doesn't have a basis on the Bible. But for me, the Bible talks about servants. So right from the beginning, we would say Summit of Servants. It's a servant, so only the servants can be there. Servants who understand the role uh, as a church. So we have for nine years that summit. In the last summit in March, we we're so very excited uh, because, uh, Brother Juan, we facilitate this gathering by faith. In the condition that we have right now, with the economy situation in the whole area, to bring 185 pastors from 11 countries 235 but people attended the, the conference was a big big miracle happy which is good is they can come to the place where everybody is trying to be in the strike being friendly it's not about titles it's not about who you are who's your title no it's about we are brothers and sisters we're servant servants of God so we sit and we be exposed to some of the voices and we heard some voices from different contexts. We had voices from San Salvador. We got voices from here because you speak of the summit. We got some voices. So we brought all those voices in the way that we can be exposed and be challenged in the way that we're doing church. So what happened is the miracle, the testimony of the pastors, when they be exposed to this kind of a message, a lot of pastors cry. The lot of pastors. Pastor, I had somebody. His name uh, is Eric from Guatemala. He got out his denomination. He's uh, the president of that denomination. He had about 80 churches, something like that. In one of the, the, the sessions, in the end, he came to me and he was crying. And he, said, and he said, Pastor Roy, I'm serving God for 40 years, but I think this morning I accept Christ. I know, I knew God. I said the real Christ because in the way that I was doing ministry is concentrating in my ego is concentrating in the name of my denomination but now I understand it it's not about me it's not about my denomination it's about the kingdom of God so testimony like this is happening all the time in our mm -hmm. summits
Wonderful to hear. And I understand that you have been uh, using technology to spread the word and equip other people <laughs> and uh, share the vision of, of kingdom transformation uh, in other places. What has been the reception of that? How has people reacted to um, the, the, the videos and, and the talks that you share? Yeah, well, we have to take advantage of the technology age right now. We are uh, recording a little videos, very rust, very rustic, uh, like very artisanal, so very mm -hmm. simple. So we put it in the YouTube, so there's uh, some uh, videos of our experience. But now, praise God, he, he provides the resources. We're gonna, we have uh, radio online, echo radio. So because echo is the echoes of the justice, echoes of transformation, so echoes goes goes and goes and goes. So we will use that to uh, facilitate some training for pastors and beside the radio for several years ago I was facilitating conversation by Skype. So I sat down in my office or wherever I am and pastor in Cuba, let me, let me tell you this, I have experience in Cuba and pastors, they don't have a lot of access in, uh, of internet, oh, but when they have it, they met under a tree, on a tree, big tree, they sit on the on the ground and they raise their their cell phone and interact with me. I am Costa Rica, and for me this is a very powerful because it's not about me; it's about the kingdom of God. Certainly, it is all about the kingdom, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're glad to partner with you and uh, to find avenues in which we can see the Latin American church. Uh, grow in its capacity to share the good news uh, with uh, its communities mm -hmm. in a way that is not only a spoken message but mm -hmm. a message that is um, really incarnated, incarnated in the realities uh, mm -hmm. that the people mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your dreams uh, for the future? What would you like to see happening in, say, in the next couple of years and how can uh, churches uh, in the U.S. Uh, begin relating to uh, to some of those efforts? Um, a lot of pastors, every time when I'm traveling, they say, they ask me if if they can send uh, some of their key leaders uh, to our church to to live the experience in Shalom Church. So according with that, with that uh, uh, requirement, we want to have a training school for leaders and pastors where they can come for 45 days to 90 days so we can facilitate theological formation and at the same time we can combine the practice mm -hmm. so they can be exposed to our way to the ministry and at the same time they can get some theology so one of the dreams that we have and it would be great if some churches want to be part of this is to help us to set up the school we have the teachers we have the facilitation we have the plays and we have the experience, we have the wheelbarrows, we have the shovels ready for the people to, that wants to go in and learn. So we really want to have that, um, the school in, in our site. Wonderful, yeah. I think that it will be a great opportunity to people to, be able to see how Shalom has developed agriculture and businesses yeah. um, and uh, ways of serving the community mm -hmm. that are uh, just so uh, compelling. Uh, and uh, and it's expressed so much what we what we are as as God's people mm -hmm. and servants of God's kingdom. Uh, what if somebody would like to visit sometime? Uh, are you open to that? Yes, uh, we're open. We really need a lot of people that want to come and be part of the shalom. But even that we have a huge needs there. Juan, I want to make sure that if somebody want to come. This is not something that they can see like a, um, like a tourist trip. We're looking for people that wants to have a relationship with my people, with my community. Because I can accept, I can have a lot of people coming down just to go to Costa Rica, rural area, take a picture with my poor people, put on Facebook, and clean their conscience. No, I want people that want to come down and be part of my community. Incarnational reality 
So I'm looking for a church that wants to create a deep relationship. I'm not thinking in res financial resources. I'm thinking about relationships, good relationships. And maybe on the process, we have to put some fishes, some bread on the table. But we're looking for a good relationship. So if somebody want to come bring a team, please, they can connect through you and let us know. We're, we're there. We're like, we got a good cup of coffee there. Well, we're glad uh, that you you are um, willing to continue to receive visitors and groups, and we'll happy to we'll be happy to facilitate that. That is uh, so expressive of our values and outreach. They're building um, long and deep connections with our partners. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And we'll be praying thank for you. you. And thank you. Uh, thanks. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your visit. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Right. Thank you.